Hello, everyone. Welcome. It is June 21st, 2019. This is the summer solstice webinar. For those of you who aren't familiar with us or just new to our work now, I'm Susan Oros. Uh, I'm the mom of uh, Sammy, who is what I consider, or we call um, a very high vibe uh, autist from the seven higher heavens. Others call this collective consciousness, the collective consciousness of the children. So uh, I'm not gonna do a, a background on myself. We, that can be found on our website and also our recent uh, podcast, Sammy's Treasures, Revealing the Jewels of Autism. I do a little bit more in depth about who we are. This is a family endeavor for us, meaning that, um, uh, my husband and I uh, primarily do a lot of this ourselves. And we have three children. Our oldest son has Down syndrome. And Sammy is our, our middle daughter. So Sammy is considered a non-speaking autistic, considered severely autistic in this, um, in this realm. And as many of you interested in this topic and joining in, probably are feeling that there is a lot more going on with these autistics than what their physical body is able to portray. So Sammy is, again, non-speaking, which does not mean that she does not have words. She just can't execute the motor planning to speak. We've heard language from her all the way since she was a baby, but it just never continued and it's not consistent and she doesn't have consistent command of that. So. We have a energetic communication channel, um, which is a soul to soul connection. Energetic, uh, and some people like to call it telepathy, but the word telepathy I think brings up uh, more of a, a mental aspect of how we're communicating, you know, mind to mind. And this is um, more energetic and soul to soul, meaning that we communicate by, um, through, through visuals, um, what she sends me, images that she sends me, uh, feelings and sensations that I have uh, in my whole body. And uh, as a soul, this is something that we're all capable of, of doing once we tap into that soul consciousness that we really, really are. And so sometimes I get direct words and she you know, transmits word for word. Um, what she wants me to say other times, you know, she'll send me images. And so I can feel the information, you know, it, it's, um, and it's enhanced and gotten better, um, as I've uh, grown and expanded. So we launched our website in late 2015. Um, but you know, it's taken me a few years since then to kind of build on what we're, what we're offering. Um, and I'm glad I did that because, you know, I, I grew in the process. I um, continued to do my own inner work and uh, it's brought me to this point now where uh, I can really receive uh, information from the Omniverse. So this presentation is uh, metaphorical in the sense that what we're sharing is kind of simplified visuals and explanations from our current perspective of what we could understand. One of our major intentions for this is to give people a sense of the vastness of what we're talking about, a vastness of who they are from outside our dimensionalized realm. Um, from the non-dimensional realms, uh, the architects, the original souls that uh, created this created this universe. Um, so that's what we want to convey. And, and just so keep in mind that this is metaphors. It's um, simplified. It's complex information. But it, but you can understand this and how big this is. And the reason why they uh, want more people to kind of have that big picture is, is because things are going to continue 
to change as the architecture, the underlying matrix and the structure of how our reality emanates uh, is, is drastically changing. So we didn't know who these autists were until starting probably in 2017. And as Sammy had transmitted uh, a message in 2017, and that can be found on our uh, YouTube channel. Um, I think it's called Sammy's Message to Humanity. And what she said was that uh, our ascension has actually been manipulated, meaning that uh, those beings who have been uh, controlling the planet, uh, controlling our consciousness and keeping us in uh, the third dimensional reality. And it's not to, to blame somebody else or, you know, to cast blame. Um, but there is a reason why it's been so challenging for humanity to, uh, even though we connect spiritually, to continue to uh, make that ascension, to continue to connect to the avatar nature of our being, to connect to our soul uh, matrix, which is the consciousness that we actually are. And so it's been, it was manipulated and so it was kept a secret of who they are and what they're actually doing here. Sorry, that's my dog, he's over there sleeping and making sounds. And um, so we had to, enough cosmic windows and doors had to be opened enough and changed so that uh, we reached the point of no return. Um, meaning that they really could not do anymore, even though they're continuing to try to uh, manipulate humanity. And we, you know, we see that going on still through media and the polarized nature of our political systems. You know, this is, this is a war over consciousness to some degree, um, but it's changed enough now where uh, we are at the point of no return. And they were started moving the third dimensional harmonic universe, and I'll show that with the diagram, to the second harmonic universe. And so that happened in 2000, that was starting to happen in 2017. I didn't realize it at the time, um, that's when I was doing that planetary synthesis uh, monthly webinars that's on our YouTube channel as well, that we were talking about moving to the next harmonic universe. The kids were showing me these images of these bars through our entire universe and you know these fields being surrounded by our universe and so our universe our third dimensional universe was actually moved to a higher harmonic where things were vibrating differently and that was kind of accomplished in the beginning of 2018 and uh since then now things have really been uh changing uh, quite a bit so um let me go to uh, our slideshow then so that you can get a sense visually what I'm talking about here. You know, so our universe has always been in this 15 um, harmonic universes. So, um, and this is actually not a secret from what I found out. I um, had a session with a quantum healer Sammy told me, I think in sometime in 2015, that um, she came in with a 15 chakra system. And this quantum healer said, yeah, she's right. We actually operate in a 15 dimensional universe. Um, so, you know, as you can see, the first harmonic universe, this is, you know, uh, first, second, third dimensions. Second harmonic universe is fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensions. Uh, third harmonic is seventh, eighth, and ninth dimensions, and fourth harmonic is eleventh, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth, and this is thirteenth, fourteenth, and fifteenth um, dimensions within these harmonic universes. So we've been held in this third dimensional kind of reality. So, um, as you can see how big this is. So this is Andromeda, which is considered like the center and the heart of our universe. Here is the Milky Way galaxy, which and it's even smaller than that if you think about this as our entire universe uh, containing billions of 
um, galaxies. So the second harmonic is here, right? So angelic, the angels would be about here, 11th dimension in this, you know, band. Um, and we talk about uh, Pleiadians, Arcturians, you know, we're talking about this harmonic universe or, you know, in, within here. So when you're uh, kind of vibrating in um, this lower, the lowest harmonic, um, the first, second, third dimensions, then, you know, these other beings who are, their form is, uh, the lowest their form is, exist, exists in, is here. So now as the avatar human, we actually hit all these harmonic universes. 13, 14, and 15 is where we're supposed to be accessing the, the true mother and the father consciousness. So 13th dimension is the mother arc. 15th is the father arc. And we were supposed to be have open access to, to all, all of this as the 12th dimensional avatar human. The 14th dimension is sort of like a portal into the omniversal realms. And again, this is a very simplified diagram. It doesn't actually obviously look like this because there are refractions and um, reflections within the dimensions, which then allows us to uh, be blended. So in essence, we've always been multidimensional because we can't manifest a form or a structure without engaging all of these uh, dimensional uh, frequencies of these, uh, har these harmonic universes. So now, again, then uh, frequency and vibration, as you go up, then the uh, frequencies become higher and you're vibrating higher, right? So the seventh dimension, eighth dimension, ninth dimension, these are higher vibrations. Actually, when we get into 9, 10, 11, 12, those are what we call the antiparticle um, dimensions. And we access sort of liquid light from um, out there from the omniversal realms. The eighth dimension, which is considered the high heart uh, that we access at the thymic level, is sort of the transition um, into the antiparticle. So, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one would be the particle, uh, particleized dimensions, and above that is the antiparticle. So, in essence, we are matter and antimatter, right? We have to, uh, it, we need both in order to collapse into this form. And the third principle then is our beingness in this form. And then you, it's the idea of then becoming the balance of these two opposites so to speak so um that's our 15 dimensional universe how it was and i say was because we're mor morphing now into an 18 dimensional universe and i know some of this is um probably a bit out there but you don't have to understand um everything that i'm saying and, uh, and again it's the attempt to bring down the information and get the big picture of what of what is underway and how big uh, this is. So we're speaking to each of your soul consciousness. We ask that you um, listen in a state of neutrality and also retain your power to discern, but, um, but also listen with your heart, listen with your soul and take only what resonates for you today, okay? So now, this has been um, been getting clear, and if you took our uh, Building Your Human Soul Vessel, um, this is even different information than what I presented then. So these um, other um, higher heavens has been coming in a bit more clearly in the last six weeks from Sammy. So, the seven higher heavens refers to these uh, rings here that's outside of the 15 dimensions. And the galactic suns, um, if you saw some of our images about the galactic suns on our website, 
this is out here. So this is the scale that we're, we're talking about. This is the scale of who these soul beings are from the seven higher heavens. So the seventh heaven would be this outer ring. Um, it accesses the galactic suns, which, you know, they don't actually look like this. These are um, sort of the colors that uh, emanated through for us to be able to um, engage with them at the level that we're currently and consciously able to uh, perceive them. So um, this is where the autists of the seven higher heavens are, are from. And so, again, this is, we've been in a, a false matrix held in this bandwidth so that we are vibrating and oscillating within a limited, closed, finite consciousness. So, and this is what this uh, represents. I'm going to take a deep breath because, you know, the kids are really coming in. Everyone else, take a deep breath as well. I don't know if you can feel the, um, the energy from the kids. Okay, so false matrix. Sammy um, had told me a few years ago, I didn't know what it meant, that she is from the seventh heaven. And so being from outside of that uh, dimensionalized field and not being fully integrated into our third dimensional bodies, it's like getting a view from the outside and, and being able to see. And so she said, this is sort of representation of the false matrix. Now, um, matrix and things like that, it sounds like it's science fiction, but energetically, it means that we are, there is literally a foundation of many, many different uh, fractal patterns and geometries. And that's, that's what we call the matrix because there has to be some energetic platform in order to manifest a reality, whether it's a false matrix or what we might consider the true organic matrix. And so what she said, well, there's a funny way that um, they described it to me in the last couple of weeks. So imagine like sometimes, you know, if you, when your fly is down, your zipper's open and you don't know it because you can't see it, right? Until you look down and somebody says, oh, your fly is down, you know, the same kind of, it's a similar kind of thing. So they're looking for, they're, they can see this from the outside and not being um, caught up in that third dimensional reality. They can see that we've been operating in this false matrix. Now, many masters have come, you know, here to try and break us out of this, you know, false matrix, the illusion that we've been in. And essentially, then the information continued to get distorted because our mental bodies have been operating in uh, a third dimensional by wave architecture. So what does that mean? This is by wave architecture. So if any of you have read like the flower of life books, um, we talk about the, the vesica Pisces, the two spheres, right? That how we've been um, emanating or manifesting is uh, that light comes through this vesica Pisces and uh, that's how we've been manifesting our reality. So let me just say, this does not mean that we have not ex seen and experienced beauty in our world, right? Because there is light, but we ex experience extreme polarity in a bi-wave system. So, and then it traps reversal systems in the body and makes it clear to, uh, makes it difficult to clear our mental bodies and makes it difficult to clear our uh, emotional bodies. We experience disease and we're always trying to come back into balance, which is, you know, something that we can see. 
We go far to the right and say, oh no, that's not what we want. We go far to the left and say, oh no, that's not what we want either. And we see this especially playing out in our um, political arena, right? The Democrats, the Republicans, you know, no, that's not, you know, that's not what we want either. And so we're continuously bouncing back and forth. And what, what else is important about that is that our belief systems and our mental body constructs have been based on this bi-wave. So we have beliefs such as victims and victimizers, right? Worthy and unworthy. Those who deserve, those who don't deserve. Those are polarized concepts that really do not exist in um, the organic structure and the true architecture that we were supposed to be um, based on. So this is what we've been experiencing up to this point. The flower of life unfortunately, is part of this bi-wave architecture. This is the flower of life. This is what we've been presented. And this, and, I'm, and again, I'm not saying that this is good or bad right now. I'm saying that this is part of this bi-wave architecture. And it doesn't mean that we don't experience beauty because there is light that's emanating through that vesica Pisces. Um, they're riding on um, sort of the essential nature or the essential, uh, the minimal aspects of what is needed in order to create a form. So there is beauty. The plants, the animals, everything, there is beauty in it. Our bodies, though, are manifesting out of this uh, architecture, which is the basis, again, for our structure and the basis for our form. And so just like I was saying, right, by way we experience polarity, it makes it difficult to clear emotions. Reversal systems, reversal codes are embedded into this architecture. So that's, that's an important, important piece here to um, understand that this is what has been going on. So the Vesica Pisces, what does this mean? This is from the Ascension Glossary. So this is part of the closed system. There's a finite energy supply. So we get energy by consuming others' energies and it's parasitic, right? So we eat life in order to maintain life. That's the idea. Uh, the energetic imb imbalance, it was purposely programmed by the controllers to distort the organic relationship between the electron and proton spin. Life force energy has been harnessed by controllers and hijacked through creational accords and in our inorganic architecture. This is bipolar geometry. Okay. Now, if any of you watch other people like David Wilcock, he talks about um, Louche. Uh, that's the, that's the kind of, uh, the energy that is, gets harvested and is being transited to support these other beings who are operating on what Sammy and the collective called, they're operating on fractured consciousness. And so they are not operating in the law of one, as we can see, they hijack, uh, especially on fear and um, lower those lower base third dimensional energies, which is uh, part of the agenda to keep us in looping in third dimensional reality. Okay, the true, the true architecture is supposed to be based on the Trinity or the tri-wave. And this is why we keep seeing this three, um, the Trinitized form, uh, uh, Yeshua, the message of, you know, the Trinity. And, and again, it's not about religion, but it's about coming back in to balance. Again, this is forced reversal codes and split patterns that continually fragment our consciousness at multiple dimensional levels. 
and it's kept us unaware of the higher dimensions which we would normally and organically have access to. Uh, there's another point that Sammy wants me to make. So, oh, okay. So, in bi-wave systems, right, there are there is a lot of good that goes on, what we call good. There's a lot of light um, that comes through us and that we express. But in order to maintain that bi-wave system, you also have the dark. And so we have people, okay, we have people that are experiencing wealth and well-being, but there, we have also have people who are experiencing suffering. And that will, con that will continue, to continue to happen if we stay in that bi-wave pattern. There's somebody else and there are other beings that are, quote, paying for the, the light that others experience. And if we can keep enough people in that light and not really seeing the shadow aspect, then, you know, they can continue to play that game. And so then everyone is not experiencing the well-being that naturally would be experienced when we're uh, eventually going to be experiencing and manifesting out of that tri-wave. And Sammy is saying this is a very critical piece of why they're here. They're not here for just a few people to ascend and get out of this uh, false matrix. They want everybody. This is about humanity. This is the collective humanity. And they are human. They are a part of that human soul consciousness. They are the original human soul consciousness. They are the creators of this universe. They are the creators and the emanations as soul beings of uh, the, human, the human soul. Now, will everybody make it out in this lifetime, meaning make that, make that change? Um, it may not look like it, but on that bigger scale, there are multiple um, doorways being opened for people uh, or soul beings to then be re rehabilitated in another time space reality or um, people are, who are here who look like they're not going to quote ascend. Um, they're here and there's as a soul consciousness, they're taking in as much of this uh, vibrational information as they can and uh, they may reincarnate into a, a future timeline here and then do their do their part they may be doing their part in in showing us the shadow aspect of humanity and so again there's no judgment when we um, connect with these uh, autists of the seven higher heavens there really is when you when you really feel into what their um, consciousness is emanating there there's there really is no judgment and the, even these beings with fractured consciousness they are trying to um, rehabilitate everyone and all these beings so there's a there's a much bigger agenda beyond what our human minds can imagine so tri-wave is the basis for balanced systems. Uh, this is where we experience neutrality. Our soul matrix is based on a tri-wave. So the bi-wave is not a soul match, it's not a match for the tri-wave soul matrix. And again, this is why they don't fully connect to the body because um, it is not a it is not a vibrational match. So a lot of the kids, when you hear them talking, you know, or expressing themselves, maybe for the first time through uh, things like RPM or facilitated communication, you know, they talk about their soul. Sammy talked a lot about soul when she first started doing uh, RPM. Other kids, I've heard the same thing. They talk about themselves as 
as soul beings. They know they're soul beings. They're no, they know they're an emanation of uh, the creator. So there's no illusion for them from in that uh, perspective. So one of the metaphors that um, one of the kids had given, given us, given me, is uh, that this is a metaphor for the original soul. Out of formlessness, the first breath created the first, let's say, sphere. And then um, the second breath, and it's, there's a much more detailed story about that, but I won't give you the detailed version. It's in our blog. It's in one of our blogs as well about the 12 galactic suns. So then um, uh, creates a second sphere, it exhales and creates uh, a second sphere out of, out of formlessness. And those first two, then, you know, it, it's like being able to see itself for the first time. And when the two, so you can imagine this as maybe one is masculine and the other feminine. And when the two join together, they create a third. And so this is the idea of the Trinity, the tri-wave. It enabled um, formlessness, so the creator to then form geometry. So this is like the first geometric form, right? If you think of the bi-wave when there's only two, all you can really do is create a line. You can't have a form like this. And so once it was able to do this, then um, it emanated a breath, which is like the fire, right? And so this is the first soul matrix, then animated by the breath, and that is spirit. And so then spirit, uh, or the consciousness of the creator, right, can emanate itself out as more complex geometries and fractals are created. And one of the things that was um, surprising for me um, when I was doing the Galactic Sun meditations last December is that when we create with this tri-wave that's balanced, that regardless of how uh, fractalized the geometry becomes, meaning how small, you know, in bits of this geometry that can emanate, that there is actually no distortions. So when we create out of uh, that bi-wave architecture, we have had distortions, distortion after distortion. And so if you can imagine now, we see where we are just in our physical body, what those distortions after a while, the accumulation of distortions, what it's doing to our physical body, right? We have disease, um, we have uh, mental fragmentation, we have emotional fragmentation. There is so much distortions. It's our belief patterns become more and more distorted so that again, even when great masters were sent, then uh, the information at some point would become distorted because, again, we're interpreting from a bi-wave mental body that continues to try and uh, logic out and rectify the discrepancies. And really, it's back, you're going back into the same system again without even, without even realizing it. And so uh, this is a big reason why the kids are here. It's like, okay, we've done it all different kinds of ways. Uh, and now we're just going to have to get in there ourselves. It's kind of the idea or the feeling um, and really do something, something drastic. And so this is what um, is currently underway. So this is another perspective. Um, that they uh, had shown. And if you were in that uh, Build Your Human Soul Vessel class, this is what I had uh, shown. So the kids, Otis of the Seven Higher Heavens is out here. This is the Omniversal Realms, okay? Uh, one thing I wanna point out too is people who are working with uh, what they call the multiverse. My feeling is that they're uh, um, talking about this because now as these doorways are opening to these other uh, the other harmonics 
it's as if we're operating in the multiverse because uh, the five harmonic universes, they're like universes within universes. And so they're talking about the multiverse, which is um, opening up to this field. There's another way of looking at, <clears throat> again, the liquid universes, the antiparticle. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Take a sip of water. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, again, <clears throat> so they're from like the seven higher heavens out here, the liquid universes, um, the omni harmonic realms, which has to do with sound <clears throat> and tones that are coming through, which is how our light bodies are created. And I'll talk a little bit more about um, the light body as we go and the harmonics um, that, are, uh, that are emanating. So the Ophira universal cluster is something that the kids um, shared with me a couple of months ago. And this is, in the, this is sort of the universal cluster that we um, belong to. And there's also what they've uh, been showing me lately is that these are like micro universes as well that is surrounding our entire universe and um, sort of coming in uh, in sort of back doorways is the only way to describe it right now coming in back doorways through the microcosmic architecture that all, that we also exist in we exist in macrocosmic and microcosmic and so they're coming in with uh, these new what we would call elemental spirits, uh, divas, right? Energetic um, codes. So they're coming in from all different uh, directions to rebuild the architecture uh, uh, of, of, our, of our dimensionalized system and of our reality, okay? So this is uh, sort of the, the metaphor for the unawake, human right so we've been operating as if we are this is our chakra system right and so operating as if we are like on this um canvas of the dimensionalized system right and so our chakra systems are plugging into these dimensions you know nobody talks about that right we talk about chakra systems and then we talk about you know dimensions and how many dimensions are there but nobody put really you know only a few people really putting the pieces together and talking about that we're actually plugging into dimensions so uh root chakra is first dimension sacral chakra is second dimension third chakra is the third dimension right so this has been the human vibrating in this third dimensional kind of reality and not aware, you know, and, and taking an awful lot of work to connect to these higher, uh, higher vibrating dimensional lies fields or dimensions of the, through the chakra system. Okay. Um, this is the ego matrix first, second, third dimension. This is where we have mental body and uh, emotional body fragments, uh, fear programs generated through the root chakra, uh, sexual misery kinds of programs focused on sex, all about physical gratification, getting validation from the outside world. And so the few who make it, or you know, more and more, connect into the heart where we start to, to really access the soul matrix, okay? And uh, the soul matrix is fourth, fifth and sixth dimensions. This is where we access soul consciousness. Over soul is seventh, eighth, and ninth dimensions. All right? And so this has been this has been the trap and this has been why it's been so difficult. And again, reversal patterns keeping us in uh, limitations so that even if we do cross the threshold, cross the diaphragm, 
and connect to the upper, the higher aspects of our being. There's a lot of reversal codes that have been put in the crown, seventh dimension. And so we just keep coming back and vibrating within this, this bandwidth and uh, making it very challenging to really access uh, ourselves as the, as the full 12th dimensional avatar uh, human. So let me see if there's anything else that I'm missing. No, Sammy's saying, okay, keep going. All right, so what does that have to do with the, our, the autistics? And what are they doing here? Well, they, by being embodied here, they're literally pulling down new codes and activations from the uh, omniversal realms out of, out of the connection, their direct connection with formlessness or the formless one. Um, this is beyond the multiverse, like I was just uh, describing. And they moved the first harmonic universe to the second harmonic universe. What does that mean? So, again, this is just a metaphor. So, this, if this is the first harmonic universe where it used to be here, they moved it to the second harmonic universe. They moved it up where it's now easier to access the, uh, again, the soul layers, fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensions. They moved it up so that we could start vibrating higher. And it also then begins to change the third dimension, the third dimensional rules. Okay, so like I was saying, we've been held in, by, to keep, we've been kept in this third dimensional reality for a reason, right? Uh, these are multidimensional beings who have an understanding of multidimensional uh, fields and how to uh, bend the rules of those, uh, of those uh, dimensionalized systems. So it's like saying that there, there's been a program that's been operating that we haven't really been aware of, even though as soul beings, we, we do understand that. Um, so it's like saying they, by moving the first harmonic universe to the second harmonic, it's like you change the program. If you can't affect the people, no matter how many times you've tried, then you change the entire program, not just software, you're changing the entire playing field of how our dimensionalized system operates. So on 320, right before the spring equinox, I mean, I was like, yay, the third dimension is over. <laughs> oh my goodness. So what does this mean? Well, again, I said the first harmonic universe moved to the second harmonic universe uh, at the end of 2017, 2018. Well, that was the first part, right? And so we've been in sort of this adjustment period ever since then. There has, there had to be other um, uh, openings and other things or I can't even other codes that had to come in before um, these deeper changes could take could take place. And so the first, second, third dimensional rules and this higher, these new dimensional rules, we were kind of fifth dimensional rules, were kind of coexisting together. It was allowed it was allowed to be supported while we were continuing to make these changes. And so, and our, and our kids also needed to continue to bring in um, the new information that I don't even know, not even sure what the right word is because there's no adequate words, but the only thing I'm going to call it is codes and light transmissions that had to come in um, for these next phases to really uh, engage. And so first, second, third dimension was being supported through th 2018. Um, and now we're really starting to rock and roll, let's say. And this is really starting to, to change. So um, 
you know, they're holding a field. And when I say they, I mean, there's also some of us who are from those omniversal realms who are not um, autistic. We, you know, some of us had to come in not autistic. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about some of that with about what the autism from my perspective uh, and the higher autism of the seven higher seven higher uh, higher heavens means. Um, but anyway, I'm losing my train of thought. Uh, da, 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 okay. So we're starting to move forward now as we start to um, stabilize as well. What does this mean? Well, it means that in order to change the first, second, third dimensional rules, I mean, it's really, it's like, it's like a, a pebble and you know, in the water that gets dropped in the water, if there's a ripple effect, it has to change everything, right? Our entire dimensionalized system is changing. We're becoming an 18 dimensional universe. And I mean, and that's gonna take thousands of years, you know, to completely do that but we're we're living through the end of uh third dimensional reality the rules of 3d rolled up into the second harmonic universe and it affects um all the other dimensions so again it's not linear it's actually like these dimensions are bending in and all around us so this is what's taking place because of our kids that are here. So by being here embodied on the planet, um, they can, so again, this is the seven higher heavens. This is our universe just uh, for the sake of, of space and um, a visual, I'm not showing the entire 15 dimensions here. So this is the seven higher heavens. Um, by being here, they're pulling in all these new codes um, of information. So this is part of what Sammy is doing. And um, the, the kids that, uh, they all have their different, their different roles in this process. So Sammy uh, and those that are from this first, second and third galactic suns, seem to be the ones really pulling this, pulling this in right now. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as uh, galactic suns. So these are some of the examples of the waves that uh, came in. So this is uh, on 3519, um, it's called the Aqualasha. Uh, Lisa Renee of Energetic Synthesis calls the seven higher heavens uh, Aqualasha. And, um, we access that through uh, Andromeda. There's a portal that runs through there. And by the way, they, um, from what I saw, they opened that portal back up. It had been damaged. Um, and so in, on seven, I still remember, it was on seven, 17, 17. Um, Sammy had one of the worst headbanging episodes that I had ever seen. We were driving in the car and out of nowhere, she just started banging her head uh, against the window of the, of the car and uh, I had to pull over. And so um, I pulled over and I checked in to see how I could help her, what was going on. And I saw this, and basically this, this portal being like um, brought down, like breaking through um, our dimensionalized field. So anyway, so that was part of, you know, it was part of the process of what's been What's been happening so this came in on 3519 um and when i see it i see it through sammy's body i see that she's having a difficult time uh and so this is sort of the energy that i was um seeing all these different colors really really tiny like diamonds or gems um etheric jewels coming through so these are the different colors that i saw coming in and so this was another wave um, sort of coming in uh, and bringing coherence to that, um, these waves coming in. So they're basically flooding our 
entire dimensionalized field to make these changes. This is a recent transmission from what I call the, the second heaven. Um, uh, in the last six weeks, they had me using very uh, specific colors for each uh, higher heaven so that I could keep track of uh, where, uh, the, where the uh, information was, was coming from. So this was clearly from the second heaven. This is having a very physical effect on us. Um, I could feel it in my bones. So there are multiple levels of clearing that's, uh, that's taking place. Some of us, our, our um, uh, access points as well, if you're a, um, uh, a star seed or someone who affects the, um, affects the grid, like the indigo ones and twos on the planet, um, we have direct effect uh, on the planet and, and on the grid. And so you might be feeling some of this, uh, this energy and these waves that are, that are coming through. Again, uh, something that I saw coming through Sammy's body um, so what happens to our bodies? Yeah, that's a good question because we are, we are manifesting out of those dimensionalized fields. Um, the chakra membranes dissolve because in, uh, if we're vibrating higher, those chakra, that chakra system was actually designed for a much denser human. And so uh, as the dimensions are changing, our chakra column is also, is also uh, dissolving and it becomes one vertical channel. There are little access points still on each um, where the chakras were, but the, the 12 chakras, uh, which is the main chakras for the 12th dimensional, avatar human dissolve and becomes one vertical one vertical channel and also the the colors change we've been um operating right we've been told that the first root chakra is red the uh sacral is orange the uh solar plexus is yellow and and so on well, when the uh, chakra members dissolve and you have little jewels left in where the chakra, the main chakra points were, um, the colors will depend on your unique soul matrix and what you're, what you're emanating. And Sammy's also saying, and also the oversoul matrix uh, that you um, belong to. So through the oversoul, Again, we act, which we access through seventh, eighth, and ninth dimensions, which is the third harmonic universe as we've known it. Um, that's the oversoul, and so you also have a unique connection to the the oversoul matrix. This is where we also uh, access the collective consciousness, the collective human soul. And so we have like a soul lineage, even as an oversoul being. And one of, the, one of the exciting things that I've been feeling for uh, this past week is that um, uh, a lot of the kids, our younger generation, are being activated at that oversoul level. Um, like my younger son, um, this uh, college student that works for us, she's I think 20, 23, 23 years old. I felt her being activated at that um, oversoul level. And, um, and then uh, yesterday, some toddlers, you know, I could see that the really little kids our, their oversoul is being activated based on um, that oversoul lineage. So like um, my younger son, the, the, the names were coming in as like um, these, 
Latin sounding or uh, Spanish sounding names like the Mendez lineage. And again, uh, I looked, tried to look up the name and there's some distortions in the interpretations, but sort of the original energetic meaning of these uh, names. Like the little kid yesterday was uh, the Escobars, you know. Um, so they're being activated, obviously, you know, to carry on uh, this ascension path, the, the dismantling of our belief systems, which is especially uh, important um, that they're going to be continue to be doing as they grow up. Because again, this, this is a, um, uh, a project that is hundreds of years old. And so, you know, we as the adults, we're, 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 we're starting this process, we're supporting this process. And um, our kids and the younger generation, you know, they'll have their part. And so they're being activated now uh, to what they need to be doing as well. So um, eventually, yeah, we become in, embedded into the dimensionalized field. We're not just like this, this drawing that's plastered on the dimensions, but um, we are embedded into the dimensionalized field. When we did the uh, building a human soul vessel class, um, that's one of the things that we had talked about. Like we, we actually um, connected like our left palm chakra uh, is connected to the seventh dimension, the right palm chakra connected to, we connected it to the, the ninth dimension. And if you think about it in terms of uh, what Yeshua did, right? Um, uh, so seventh dimension being a particleized dimension and then right hand, the ninth dimension being antiparticle and the eighth dimension, right? Being the sort of the bridge that, that balances the two um, particle, antiparticle. That's how we materialize, right? That's how we, we create uh, form. So it was pretty wild. And, and, and imagine that your left eye is connected to the seventh dimension. Your right eye is actually connected to the sixth dimension. And so, so on with many of our, uh, with all of our body parts, our organs are actually connected to these different dimensions. And so you are embedded into the dimensionalized field. Um, so the transmissions of the 12 galactic suns, right, as we just showed a couple of two slides ago, our whole entire dimensionalized system is getting wonky. It's, you know, changing and morphing, and it's going to continue to change and morph um, for the next, well, and I don't know when it's going to stabilize, but this is, um, a part of what we're, we're living through. And so the 12 galactic suns, each one is a dimension. And so they're giving us uh, the tools of how to stabilize ourselves as the dimensions are changing. And so that's what the 12 galactic sun meditations were all, was all about. So, galactic sun one, this is first dimension, law of structure. There are three kids on the planet, or three beings, and one of them just revealed herself in the last couple of weeks, I didn't know it, and she's an older woman. Um, she's here and has been here from, is from the uh, first galactic sun. Sammy and her collective are from the second galactic sun. Second dimension, sacral. Law of omniscient omnipresence. This is what's getting embedded into the dimensionalized field to stabilize us. Third dimension, law of form, right? And so some of the kids are from, there's three of them from each of these galactic suns. They're like representatives of uh, the three, those three suns. And then there are others who are like support. So there are some who seem to be working with all three. Because remember, show you the, showed you the um, harmonic universes. There's three in each harmonic universe. That's why some of them are talking about the triads of the chakras. They operate as, as, as threes. And so some of them are working in that first harmonic universe, stabilizing 
and working with the interdimensional field that enables the, uh, th the dimensions to blend together. So um, fourth dimension, the law of trinitized form. This is where we start to access the, the soul, our personal soul matrix. Fifth dimension, and this is where we're stabilizing. We're trying to stabilize uh, as a fifth dimensional reality. Notice the name of this one, the law of co-creative abundance. This is for everybody. When we're operating from soul matrix, and each of us are expressing as soul beings, then that idea of competition will go away. The idea of competition does not exist in the omniversal realms. It doesn't exist as a collective consciousness where our kids are operating because you're here to express your soul. And by doing that, you naturally receive what you need in order to do that. That is abundance. Uh, law of sacred union, which has to do with balancing the masculine and the feminine. And again, there are some of our kids who are working with this triad, stabilizing the souls of humanity and each um, personal soul matrix. So um, while cosmic vision, this had to do with the first two uh, emanations that gives us our two eyes and, and, and vision. Um, oops. Law of consensus, galactic sun eight. This is our high heart, which is the thymic area, right? This is about, again, collective consciousness. Ninth dimension, law of abundant realities. This means we co-create our realities together and we create them so that there is abundance for everybody and everything because we understand at that level that um, everything is conscious, everything is vibrating, everything has energy. Galactic Sun 10, the law of unified fields, we understand that um, these matrices create unified fields. So as a soul being, as a human being in this body, we're, we're a unified field that collapses into this form and expresses this human body. Um, law of sacred nature, 11th dimension. Our 11th chakra is actually at about 18 inches above the head. This is 11th dimension. 12th dimension, the law of cosmic Christ consciousness made manifest. This is the trinitized, this is about the trinitized form. Twelfth dimension we access um, 18 inches or oh, no, six, eight inches below our feet. So again, you could see that this is, so those um, uh, vibrationally, as you go up the dimensions, the vibrations get higher, but in our bodies, in our physical bodies, we are uh, connected to them and it has a, um, it kind of folds into itself, right? Because eighth dimension is at the high heart. Ninth dimension is actually in the area of the medulla oblongata, which is in the back of the head. Some people call that the heaven's gate. So we are accessing all 12 dimensions uh, through our physical beings physical beingness and 13th chakra is we share with the earth that's in the center of the earth uh, that's about 12 inches below our feet where we access that 15th dimension is the uh, the father and that's way out in space um, most of humanity is connecting to that through the uh, uh, the Andromedan portal which connects into the seven higher heavens 14th chakra, the 14th chakra is um, right below the uh, sternum. The kids call that the, um, the ascension cord. And again, that connects us to um, the omniversal realms. So the Council of Twelve, even though I'm talking about it as galactic suns, 
they uh, are actually one sun, they act as they act as one. And obviously, again, this is not what they look like out in the omniversal realms. Um, they are, it's actually um, uh, what someone else is calling the Paladorian suns, the omniversal, uh, the omniversal realms. These are their vast, vast original sort of emanations. What it looks like it's happening at the omniversal levels is that um, there are uh, five universes that are that are involved um, in this. So our universe, and we're connected to these four other universes. Some of the kids are coming through that, and there's a there's a healing that needs to take place with one of with one of the universes. But that's you know. Um, that's beyond the scope of what we're talking about today. We, have, we need to stay focused as human beings um, for this. But this is this is a very big endeavor for our, our kids, the autists of the seven higher heavens. Um, and again, they are uh, omniversal beings. The kids, the autists of the seven higher heavens, you know, they they seem to be the ones that are nonverbal. Or, or um, limited verbal, beyond verbal, non-speaking. I know those are some of the new words that we're um, using to talk about them. Uh, this is what we, what Sammy calls the the soul tree, and the uh, soul tree, like it says, it emanates a light body. So this part here, I give credit to Lisa Renee of uh, energetic synthesis. This is the 12 tree grid, which is what uh, we were supposed to be operating on. Um, this is the light body and what Sammy had shown is that um, the soul, our, un our unique soul matrix emanates um, uh, a soul tree like this that then emanates the tone. So these are vibrating from the harmonic tones that the soul matrix, that the unique soul matrix is uh, part of. Um, and then the, the, the light body is sort of the instruction set of how the, um, the physical body is supposed to uh, manifest to be a vibrational match with that light body. So as you can imagine, um, our physical bodies really have not even been a vibrational match with our, our light body. So this is sphere one, and again, accessing the dimensions. Sphere two, second dimensions, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 10, 11, 12. Um, and the, there's actually more connections now, new connections. Uh, when we did the um, Build Your Human Soul Vessel class uh, on Easter Sunday, actually, Yeshua um, gave me the other spheres that go on here. And so there's direct connections to our feet, our knees, uh, our palms, our shoulders some right into like uh, the back of the head, the thalamus, um, the brain, the heart, the kidneys. Um, there were many, many new connections um, that were being built. This, this is something that's new. Uh, it's a diamond sun chakra um, that we opened as well in that Build Your Human Soul Vessel class. Some people who are part of the dragon lineage um, we can open a, a diamond dragon chakra. The dragons, it's hard to really talk about exactly who the dragons are. The only way to uh, talk about them is that they, the dragons seem to be a particular kind of breath that comes out of formlessness. And so you, you get that idea of the dragon that, you know, breathes fire and the, the dragon lineages are um, bringing in the new uh, foundational matrices is the only way I can say, or the foundational geometries 
uh, that is building the new uh, structures. So if you can imagine that all, all our systems even have a, um, an architecture. So our financial institutions have a, have a, have a, a, a an underlying matrix. Our uh, belief systems have an underlying matrix. Our school systems, they have an underlying matrix. And you know, there, you have to redo all of that from the, from the bottom, right? Because again, there have been many, many distortions and the, these matrices hold our intentions. And so if we're manifesting from a bi-wave architecture, right? And that's been manipulated, there has been intentions that have been placed in those, um, in all our systems. And this is why we continue to see our, let's say government, right? Continue, we, you know, we, we try to make things, make, make things right and we try and make things, correct things. Um, and it seems like we just make it more and more complicated. We have laws on top of laws um, that we continue to try and come back into balance with these regulations, but it actually is making things more convoluted, complex, and entangled. And so all of that is being washed out. And the, uh, the diamond dragon lineages um, that are here are here to affect those, those systems. And so, um, and other people, um, you know, you can emanate the diamond sun, you know, from where the uh, human template had been uh, created. Uh, and our soul matrix is actually like a diamond sun. And we talk, you know, a bit more about that, but um, that can get a bit, bit long here. Um, but, you know, again, based on that, um, that tri-wave, that trinity, that trinity pattern, which is the true organic um, matrix. So as an example, the fully embedded human, um, you know, eventually will look, uh, and I don't know when, you know, this is all going to take place. It's happening now, you know, as we open deeper uh, into the light body and the tones of the light body, then we start to really uh, feel these um, these systems. Okay, Sam, just give me a little reminder. <coughs> um, so you know, again, the this is the left side meaning feminine, the right side meaning um, masculine, and, and uh, being balanced, and so. Um, Sammy wants me to admit, you know, say a little bit about, you know, them as well, that they come into bodies that are, you know, as we can see, they're, they're very, very sensitive. They're sensitive to all the toxins and uh, their toxic, you know, emotions, people's thoughts. Um, and they come in very sensitive because our sensory systems are a means of uh, connecting to source. It's a means of being fully connected to their, their soul. Uh, and they're, you know, even though they're not physically fully connected to their physical bodies, oh, and they had to, she's saying they, they had to connect to the physical body and they uh, turn off certain DNA. Um, each one of them, you know, different depending on what their soul matrix is doing here. And she's saying somebody, and this quantum healer told me this as well, that, I mean, Sammy, she's fully capable of turning off the autism, you know, if at a soul level, if she wants to, but that's not what her soul is here, you know, to do. So they turn off some of the DNA and DNA is actually comes from, again, microcosmic uh, geometries or matrix patterns. And that's how the, um, the uh, substances in the, oh gosh, I'm losing my words here. 
in the field of electrons and protons and how they're, they're assembled. Um, that's how they uh, align to that um, geometric pattern. And so they've turned it off so that they could remain connected to soul. Um, and they also turn it off and it makes them immune from mind control programs that go on. Um, and so uh, it makes it challenging for them in their physical bodies. Um, she's saying it will get easier as more and more of these dimensionalized and particleized fields um, start to change. So we're looking at the mid 20s, you know, like 2023, 20, 2024, 20, 25, 26, those, those years um, where more and more will become embedded into these, um, these dimensionalized fields as they're uh, continuing to, to change. So to give you an example then of these galactic suns and what it means as dimensions uh, and as a, as a means to stabilize ourselves during these monumental changes that are, are taking place. Um, and so one of the things that you can do is, and this is on our blog page with the uh, 12 galactic suns, about the 12 galactic suns, the image is there. And I believe it's on the, the page with the, uh, about the galactic suns meditate with it and see that, you know, on yourself, first dimension, law of structure, second dimension, you know, law, of, you know, and just go through it yourself. And again, you'll see how it goes up and then it bends down, right? Uh, Cause 12th dimension, the earth star is down here. So that's one way of um, engaging with these 12 galactic suns. The other thing that the kids are doing is they are emanating this uh, 18 pointed star, which um, is to join their consciousness with the human consciousness. And this will fast track humanity um, to that uh, ascension path. And so what they're showing me is like the year 2045, 20, 2050 20, around there. I mean, they're starting to emanate this and we can start engaging this, you know. Uh, but it's around that time when we'll really start, we'll, uh, they'll, they'll be vibrating that full star. So the full star is uh, 18 cubed here, as you're seeing, which, um, multiplies out to 5,832 pointed star. And someone in our um, billion human soul vessel class said, this 18 is a um, number of perfection. And if numerologically, if you add these numbers up, five plus eight is thir 13 plus three is 16 plus two is 18. It adds up to 18 again. So um, it was pretty, I didn't realize that it was pretty wild. And we did it on March 18th, 2019. So it was pretty um, amazing the synchronicities uh, that take that took place. So this is sort of the big picture of why they're here, um, what they're what they're all doing. Um, so we have a lot of free information, obviously, on our website. Um, and if you feel drawn to do this class, you know we dive deeper, we do more activations. The class is offered uh, very similarly to what we just did. It's a presentation with slides and then we do a meditation. If more people are interested, um, you can add a morning class. Uh, I'll be offering a coupon. So look for that um, in my email. If you're part of our uh, email list, we're also doing the Sammy's Treasures Revealing the Jewels of Autism podcast. And that is a, uh, that is something that Sammy has wanted to do um, for a while. 
but I just wasn't ready um, to do that. And that is to, again, bring down the information. It's to be in the energy and the field of uh, that, this collective consciousness. And by, um, by being in that consciousness to uh, help people to make the, the shift to the change, uh, the vibrational, as Amy's saying, the vibrational, um, she's saying the vibrational shift that is needed in the mental and emotional bodies. Um, she's saying the, the joining, uh, by the joining of the mental and emotional bodies that needs to take place that you, so that you are congruent and we are congruent um, in how we execute um, the mental and emotional bodies and uh, how we move then in this, in this realm as we make this, make this shift. So uh, that podcast will be at least once a month um, maybe sometimes twice a month. Sammy has already given me the title of the next one, which is, uh, the title is uh, Empathy, Humility, and the Love of Humanity. And it's the information and it is quite, quite beautiful. I haven't recorded it yet, but I can feel the, um, where the message wants to go. Because uh, again, their emphasis is that they're here for the love of humanity if you ever wondered where where is god when all this suffering is going on well god is here um god walks amongst us and as we become the avatar human uh, we we are the expression of the creator um so it's really quite amazing what they're what they're doing the other thing um the other piece um, that we'll be offering is a supporting the chakra dissolution meditation uh, which will be offered for um, an, as an exchange I think probably $18 um, we've done some several recordings on it already um, and we have to do it again so we're trying to get that out to people as, as uh, quickly as possible but that's to help support the chakra dissolution oh so the question about how do you know that your chakra membranes are dis, uh, uh, dissolving? One of, some of the symptoms of chakra membrane dissolving um, is that awareness, right? So like I had shown that it's as if um, those lower three chakras and the upper chakras have been kind of working um, not in alignment. And so you might feel like um, uh, you're not connected. Your lower body and the upper part of your body it, it has not been not been connected. So just that awareness uh, is telling you that um, the lower three chakras are ready to uh, be dissolved. Um, you might have feel uh, pains in that diaphragm area where the um, where that sort of there's been an inorganic barrier and lots of um, uh, implants even uh, to keep uh, us vibrating mainly in those lower three um, lower three chakras so you might feel pains make pains in that area might have be having problems with uh, digestion and uh, intestinal discomfort uh, or not wanting to eat meat or eat heavy you know for a while as our, our bodies start to to lighten up um, it wants to be lighter and wants to vibrate um, in a different pattern. And you may go, you may go back and forth where you might, you know, need some animal meats, and then you feel like you don't want animal meats. Um, so there's a, there's a definitely a process that uh, that goes on, and you may have unexplained symptoms. Um, if you go to the doctors, uh, we know some people ourselves, you know, who are having uh, physical discomforts and they go to the doctors they get scanned they have all kind of tests done and they can't can't find anything so um, we're connected to the dimensionalized field and so as the dimensions are changing and our bodies are are also uh, feeling feeling that uh, people who are going to have a, 
much more difficult time is um, people who are trying to continue as if everything is the same mental mental patterns that are trying to dissolve and they continue to to uh, lo try and logic it out and do things in that 3D three dimensional uh, by wave kinds of uh, thought patterns will will have a harder time and um, probably all of you who are on this um, call or interested in this type of information you're feeling that 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 flow with what wants to come through flow with what your soul is is guiding you to it's no longer easy to just plan you know ahead and have um, this goal of XYZ in six months it's you know I have to feel it I have to um, know it and then you can you can uh, walk walk the path and that's certainly what um, has happened for us um, as a family. And definitely, I feel that even though Sammy, things have been challenging with Sammy, especially these last two years for her, because she's really downloading a lot of things, this stuff through her physical, physical body to bring it in, um, that, and it's unpredictable. Uh, and it's gonna, those waves are gonna continue to be unpredictable, um, that uh, it's sort of forced us to naturally go with the flow, see what's in front of me, you know, that needs to be done today. And so I encourage um, all the parents who are experiencing that to continue to to trust in yourself and to trust in your in your kids that there's something much bigger and grander that's um, taking place. So with that, I will end it here. It's um, 10.30, oh my goodness, it's an hour and a half that I yakety yakked and I was hoping to be able to take questions, um, but you can email me questions and if people are interested, I can also uh, set up a Q&A um session you know in the in the next two weeks or so if lots of people have questions after they've watched uh the, the video replay on youtube okay so and thank you everybody for for being here and for doing your part